Well, hello, this is Dave in 9 VFR, and welcome back to my little YouTube channel that's off in silliness. It is the month of May, and in the month of May with antennas, we do play. So we're gonna do a little bit of that right now. So here's what I've got. I've got my good old MFJ SWR analyzer. There it is, uh, an old classic. I bought it secondhand when I purchased a dual band radio. The dual band radio didn't work. The uh, MFJ analyzer does pretty well. So here's what I've got. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're going to look at the effects of a Faraday cloth on SWR. SWR is a very important number for uh, all hams. And a lower SWR, the closer you can get to one to one ratio, which is zero uh, standing wave or wave that is reflected back from the transmitter to the transmitter, um, the lower the better. And so here's what I've got. I've got 25 feet of RG8 coax. I'll give you a little run right there. And through my back patio, running through the grass again, 25 feet. And here I have a Faraday cloth. It's going to get bright. And the Wolf River Coils 24-inch tripod. Uh, and to that, I think I've got, I think it's 18-gauge wire. And I did a pair of them. This little guy here, I pushed this little bolt and a wing nut through. And use oversized fender washers to uh, make a little better contact. I don't, does it do better? I don't know. That's just what I do. Uh, if you would look up, there is a 17 foot chameleon antenna, the vertical. And I have found that taking about six inches off, I shorten it right here, about six inches. Uh, and it's an approximate thing that it will improve SWR. The 17 foot, it's actually gonna be a wee bit longer is a little bit too long if you were to divide i think it's um 234 divided by the frequency for 20 meters it's just a little bit too long i take about six inches off so i have that all connected it is on the faraday cloth it's freestanding uh it's a little bit tight quarters but okay and let's look at the swr we're going to take a quick peek at the meter i am at roughly 14300 very very close to it and if you can look at the swr it is a skosh below 1.2 we'll call it 1.2 so you see that now watch the little the little thing right here i'm going to make a pretty significant change i'm going to and you can watch me here i know the video is a little bit rough forgive me we're going to disconnect that from the faraday cloth and we're going to move this off of the faraday cloth and that's the only thing we're going to do oh out to uh, settle in so i'm curious what do you think the the effect on the swr is going to be well i'll tell you what you might be surprised and um, let's just go take a look that's the only thing i did i removed it from the faraday cloth i disconnected the wire to it so now it is just the tripod sitting on the ground and let's look at rswr it has suddenly jumped up with just that to a skosh over 2.5 swr that's a pretty significant amount um, at 2.5, um, the percent being reflected back, the percent of the signal going out of the radio, out of the transmitter, being reflected back is getting significant. I, um, I took a look at the ARRL site to see if they had anything on this. And at, I'm going to... Let me see, at 2.5 to 1 SWR, it's uh, sending back, this is 18.4% of the um, of the signal of the power I'm sending to the antenna. 18.4% is coming back at 
a 1.5 to 1 SWR, only 4%. So you get over 2%, which is 11%, 11% at uh, a 2 to 1 SWR. That's what is returning back to the radio. And we're talking about some significant losses. 2.5 is um, something that's really we want to avoid. Uh, most tuners will tune 3.0. Mine will on my ICOM 7300. It'll tune a little bit, maybe even a little bit better on occasion. But um, let's take a look at three, three to one SWR. Let me take a look at, we are reflecting back 25%. 25% of the signal coming out of the radio is being reflected back and that's to be avoided. So, I'm going to very quickly put it back just to make sure everything is the way it should be. I'm going to put it right back to the antenna is there. Clipping on this. Done that little bit of change right there. And again, that's the only change I'm doing. So, we're going to take a look at the effect. And, oh yeah, we're going to bend you around. We are right at 1.2. 1.2 SWR. Sorry for the quick spin right there. I'm going to look here and see what 1.2 is reflecting back. 1.2 is 0.8% of the signal. 0.8% of the signal is coming back now. At 2 to 1, it was 11%. And now we are on under... 1%, 0.8%. So 1.2 is pretty wonderful. Um, so having done that, let's play just a little bit more. I'm curious, and I haven't done this, so I'm going to find out. Well, we're going to learn here together. What would happen, with, there's talk of um, elevated radials, and my little dog Heidi is barking in the background. There's talk of elevated radials. I'm just real curious, what will an elevated Faraday cloth do. I'll set it up and back in a minute. And we are back. I have um, removed the Faraday cloth to a fence. Um, um, but first of all, the uh, the tripod is disconnected. I'm going to show you real quick. We've got, oh, now it's a three, right at a three SWR. And, um, yeah, not good. So, here's what I've got. There's the Faraday cloth. It's just laying on the fence, separating mine and my neighbor's yard. I have wonderful neighbors. So, let's just do that. We're just going to clip that right there. And, I don't know, what do you think? Better than the, well, we'll just, oh my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm very surprised. I am very surprised. This is interesting. Uh, the SWR now has dropped down to 2.5. I really thought it might go lower. So in this configuration, laying across the fence, the Faraday cloth does not work elevated. Eh, okay, like I said, when it's May, with antennas we do play. Okay, but we accomplished what we wanted to with this video. You definitely saw the significant, significant difference in using a Faraday cloth as opposed to the tripod just sitting on the ground. Um, I'm impressed. I really am. I had no idea what to expect with the um, with the Faraday cloth elevated. Um, not as good as hoped, but interesting. Okay, um, I will be back just a moment to recap. And back just a few moments later. Hey, meet this one right here. This is Heidi. Heidi is our schnoodle. Uh, she's not much of a ham. Turns and walks away. <laughs> a stinker dog. If you know a schnoodle, they are stinker dogs. Well, anyway, so that was very telling, very significant. The, uh, the difference in SWR was really um, 
I was amazed the first time I did it. And having done it, I really wanted to show you guys. Um, 1.2, and we were actually just a little bit better than 1.2. Uh, the, the energy reflected back is less than 1%. It's 0.8% by the schedule. Um, that's uh, pretty insignificant. I think every one of us would be thrilled with our parks on the air activation system being 1.2 SWR as opposed to 3.1, 3.0 to 1, which is 25% of the signal being reflected back. What a huge difference. Um, if you weren't sold on the, uh, the Faraday cloth or some kind of significant grounding, I hope you are now. Um, I know that I am. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Dave, N9VFR, and yes, even though it's, uh, I don't know if it's 2 o'clock yet, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. And um, happy QSOs to you all. Ah, a home-brewed English bitter. Very tasty. I'll be back again when something crazy pops into my mind. I hope you learned something. I did with this one. Thanks in 73.